The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah! <laughs> Welcome in. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween, Foot Clan. Welcome into the Fantasy Footballers. Yeah, man. Monday, <laughs> October 31st. Well, we did it. We did it. We made Jason sweat profusely before the show even began. <laughs> There's nothing like wearing a fur coat under a trench coat and then throwing wigs and beards on. So we've got a uh, you paying homage today, Mr. Moore. Yes, uh, the late great Robbie Coltrane, uh, Rubius, <laughs> Rubius Hagrid. You're a you're a lizard, Sammy. <laughs> <laughs> Mike is sitting here as the dude, and then uh, yeah, man. <laughs> What I am, I'm I'm Sans the White Russian, and I'm not it's Weird Al. I'm not Weird Al. I am Greg Dulcich. Oh, yes. send in the Dulcich. <laughs> <laughs> and it's uh, it's our Halloween show. <laughs> Officially. That was a spooky Sunday. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Uh, For a lot of people. I mean, there were just such huge performances. Yes. I'm not over it. I Ooh. understand. Ooh, it was not a good we, Sunday I, for you. I Andy. was wondering at what point of the show we would get into it. I, I wished that, and I said this yesterday, we chose the wrong career. <laughs> the average The average person is allowed to rage quit fantasy football every five years. We don't have that choice, mm. Rubius. No. <laughs> and so, uh, no, I, um, I, uh, <sighs> you, you sent him in, you played Greg Dulcich and he did great. It he was did. pretty good. Yeah. And if, you know, dragged down at the one, if he had gotten in, that would have been cool. But, uh, four for 87 for the D. Hey, that's not too bad. That is not bad at all. I'm sure you were happy. I know you were happy because when that performance happened, you were happy. I made, <laughs> I made two, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Made two midweek trades for Tony Pollard and Tua Tungavailoa. How did those work out? Oh, great job. They you were. must have won. <laughs> no, I lost by point two zero, thanks to the last dump off by Daniel Jones into the hapless arms of his miscellaneous tight end that meant nothing. Mm -hmm. and, and, hey, uh, it meant something to that guy. And if I had played Kyle Pitts... <laughs> Oof, I would have won because, of course, that's the way it goes. But um, Kyle Pitts taketh and Kyle Pitts taketh away. We uh, he taketh and he taketh that's away. Right. He doesn't give. No, no, no. giving. Uh, we we do celebrate the weekend with some Monday pun day each and every week. We ask for Halloween themed uh, puns this week to commemorate what was a. A pretty wild weekend yes. in fantasy football. Beginning with, unfortunately, Raheem Ghostert. Oh, he was missing Daniel Bones. Or Tyreek Kill. He murdered. <laughs> Once again, there was Ramonster Stevenson. <laughs> oh, or Scaric Carr. Andy deserved one of these. A pits or treats. Ugh. It was the pits. Uh. And then you got the Silence of the Lamb haters. Haters. Dehaunta Foreman. He haunted me. Jonathan, what is this? <laughs> this is good. Jonathan Taylor Tombstone. Or DeAndre Happy Halloween. You had Gus Dreadwords. Or Doodly Doot. Devante Adams family. I don't even. That's the, that's the whole Raiders. The Raiders were the Adams family. It's not even a good one. Jacoby Michael Myers. Yes. And Darnell Booney. Ooh. Scary. Also faced him. Yeah, there is nothing quite like losing to uh, 
DeHonta Foreman either. Yeah. Yeah, running backs don't matter. Am I right? <laughs> yeah, they don't matter unless you had one of the <laughs> five that just blew the league up this week. Yeah, I had Derrick Henry go for over 200 yards and two touchdowns, and he's not the running back one or two this week. Well, yeah. uh, uh, positive regression for Mr. Alvin Kamara. Yep, I hope you were uh, listening to the DFS pod and uh, maybe maybe played around with that two-touchdown Alvin Kamara. I have uh, so many hairs in my nose right now, guys. Oh, I can't, I can't see <laughs> anything. Just- this, I mean, usually YouTube.com is- slash the fantasy football. <laughs> the deucers are dressed up as well today. If we want to. Yeah, baby. And they're in there. deucers alley. Look at that. Oh, look at that sign. You got to go to YouTube immediately. We've got, oh, yeah. We've got uh, Conan O'Brien in the middle. <laughs> we've got a uh, just a literal pickle with no, a pickleball pickle paddle. Baller. Yeah, he's a pickleballer. And then we have how we see Josh all the time in our heads. <laughs> that is right. Which is the jester. So. Why did, Josh, why didn't you dress up? Yeah, it's Halloween, man. Yeah, man. Come on, get it. <laughs> get it. The spirit, look, man. Yeah. All right. So, looking good, fellas. Uh, we've got studs and duds on the show today. Some news to talk about because uh, you can't escape a weekend without a few injuries. News and notes from around the league, presented by USAA Insurance. And Foot Clan, I want you to follow along with me. I know Jason began the show. Pretty uncomfortable. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, so we, uh, out, on a scale of one to a hundred, where did you begin the show? Where are you now? Uh, I started. And let's at, say a hundred is is maximum discomfort. Max. I started at twenty four. I'm at a twenty eight right now. Oh, you didn't go up that much. Slowly no, rising. No, no, no. But I think the longer this goes, <laughs> and the more sweat and hair gets in my eyes, uh, I think I think it'll escalate quickly. It'll ramp up. Yeah. You're the best part to me. Is, well, there's he's two. a little bit bigger today. Well, yeah, because yeah. Hagrid's a, a been big putting man. on the weight. Uh, no, you would day. Uh, but you, you're without your glasses. You have the commitment to yeah to being Hagrid. You can't see nothing. No, <laughs> that's, that is true. My uh, if you if the Foot Clan could see my laptop screen right now, it is, is zoomed in. And you're, I mean, you have a fur. There's like you're just in a regular costume, but you you are. You feel like you can't move for some reason. Yeah, <laughs> you are I don't, being. I don't understand. You are acting it. like a statue. You're allowed to move, man. Oh, it's easier <laughs> said than done, gentlemen. <laughs> it's just, it's just a wig. You can turn your head. How do you do all that groundskeeping? <laughs> Barely moving like that. Uh, all right, we had, um, we had news that the Bengals are not putting Jamar Chase on IR. All right, that's a treat. Yeah, not always. Uh, I'll say this: we've we've done this long enough to know that that's not always the right decision by a team. We've had many times that they haven't done it, and then they've kept them out longer than the IR. Yeah, I mean, it's really it, it's flexibility, not, right? Sometimes when a team does not put a player on the IR, it is a sign that they are going to miss fewer than four weeks. This is the hope. When you've got a superstar like this, someone that's so important to the offense, like we saw this with Keenan Allen. They didn't put him on the IR. He missed the full IR time. They just want the flexibility in case mm-hmm. that player can get back quicker than expectations. They're too important to the offense. It's worth the roster spot. And so that's what's happening with uh, Jamar Chase. I don't think he plays in the next month. Tyler Higby exited with a neck injury, came back into the game, and then at the end of the game, Cooper Cup. Yeah. Injured his right ankle, was seen with the ankle wrapped and limping following the game, and the world came to a stop. It's complete garbage time. I mean, the game was over and done with. This is why it's like I I still don't really understand when – Yeah, Daniel Jones should have taken a knee. Good point, Jason. (laughs) He should have. Like, the NFL should do that more. When you're – out of it and you know there's yeah, two minutes left in a game and you're down winning. three scores that's or whatever laying down man dude that's soft zeke zeke would never yeah. do that just stay healthy that's what you should do um unfortunately he got injured and because it was at the very end of the game he had a full game i think this is going to be missed by some people so would you like if you were if you if you had cooper cup right now would you consider trading him no. away? No, no. They've said they thought he push league. They think that he dodged a bullet, and it's just a minor. Yeah, see, injury. they think it's a minor injury. Well, but we just don't know. I, no, there's a, there's no possible way I'm trading the number one wide receiver on the like. I'm kind of scared he might have a bum ankle for a week or two. Okay. I don't no. know if you saw this, Al, because I know that the uh, I know that the the betting line on Cooper Cup's receptions oh. <laughs> was seven and a half. Did you happen to follow along? I took the over. 
Yeah, he, but did you follow along to what happened? Oh, you, no, I didn't. You were here, and he had seven receptions in the first half. Do you know when he got his eighth reception? I don't, know. One minute and 14 seconds left in the fourth when quarter. He when he got his injury. Yeah. Wow. It no, was I had no the idea. the final – I mean, that, he barely hit the line, and you were walking out of here thinking you were a, so it, it a wealthy pickle. Yeah. Thanks, Coop, for getting it done. It Appreciate wasn't you. just a full garbage time catch because it was important to some people. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Christian Watson came back. And then he left. Concussion. This guy, man. That was really sad. He finally yes. gets back from his uh, hamstring injury, goes out with a concussion, was ruled out pretty early. We'll have to wait and see if he's available to play next week. He's still someone that I am wanting to stash, even though Romeo Dobbs, of course, on my bench, had a good week, as did Michael Gallup. Uh, Devontae two. Parker exited with a knee injury. Um, they basically got good news today on that. Uh, yep. Not looking too serious. Jonathan Taylor. Oh, man. Aggravated his ankle injury at the end of the first quarter. It was 5 for 38 before the injury. Came back, was 11 for 38. Didn't get in on the one-yard line. Just one of many of my players that didn't. It was an interesting strategy that the Colts employed. They had uh, Sam Ellinger uh, <laughs> with, with his debut. I mean, he, like he had some ups and downs, but the the part that really hurt the team was Sam is taking like all of his snaps in shotgun, yeah. And so they get down to the the goal line, and they're in shotgun, and they give the ball to Jonathan Taylor, who loses like three or four yards instead of the the normal under center. The like under center, what are the odds that Jonathan Taylor gets in from the one? I mean, like eighty plus percent. Yeah, we saw this Jonathan Taylor's rookie year when they started out in the shotgun. Um, I, I think it was that Philip Rivers and and then they figured out like, oh man, we can run a much better running offense, uh, you know, when we are under center instead of in shotgun and they they've got to figure that out quick for Jonathan Taylor. I'm looking at the numbers here last year when Jonathan Taylor was a monster, forty seven percent under center. For what it's worth. Okay. okay. So I wanted to see how bad it was. I mean, the truth is, is he's not healthy right now. Right. And then Ellinger didn't check the ball down at all. I mean, he had a season high in receptions last week. It's super concerning and frustrating if you have Jonathan Taylor because you don't want to trade him for pennies on the dollar because he's Jonathan Taylor. But at the same time, you're not getting anything to help Correct. your your roster. I mean, you're, but the 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 positive news because the. It's out there. The Johnny Taylor tilt is real. I just got tagged in a tweet that was uh, this person could trade four. They would get Jonathan Taylor and trading away Gus Edwards and Cortland Sutton. Oh, my goodness. Yes. So the people who have Taylor are. Can't do that. They're furious. Well, I would take Taylor. I mean, you I would, could oh, do no, that. No, no, yes. I'm sorry. I thought I would, you said that he was no, trading no, no. Taylor away. No, 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 no. He would get Taylor. So yes, this please person. do that. So, I mean, I'm on smash and acceptance. Look at. Now, different team, of course, but the, the point is, look at Alvin Kamara. Look at how the season started for him. It was a catastrophic first-round pick. He was bad, then he missed a bunch of games with injury, and you're like, when the heck am I going to get good Alvin Kamara? And then elite running backs, they turn it around. The last three weeks, Alvin Kamara has been great, and, and then the, the, you know, the, the crescendo of this week into being – Oh, well, there's like that Christmas Day Alvin Kamara that I was hoping I'd get in the first round. So do not – I would not tilt trade Johnny Taylor. Is there any situation That was situation really good advice, but all, all I heard was yada, yada, yada. <laughs> he didn't give me point three more to win me my week. Yeah, I, I, hear, I, you, I hear you there. I feel you there. But remember, this is a long season. There's a lot of weeks left. And even if even if he's not at full strength for the next two weeks, there's so much football left. Keep playing, keep playing Jonathan Taylor. He's going like Mike said, the elite running backs, they're they're going to be good. He's just injured right now. I would be paying mind to whether Deion Jackson needs to be on your roster right now, though, because sure. they could give him a week. We'll see how practice looks. Uh Irv Smith got hurt again. Yeah. Uh, same old for him. MRI today. Uh Mark Ingram out as well. And we will be on watch for the Trade deadline, right? We've got that coming very, very soon. This Tuesday. Tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern. Now, the, 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 I mean, the, the most clear path here for a trade is, is Kareem Hunt to the Los Angeles Rams. Uh, the fact that they were running out Ronnie Rivers as their primary running back, which Daryl Henderson had been dealing with illness over the week through practice. So it's like that sucked if you were counting on Henderson. We weren't expecting Ronnie Rivers to be the guy for the Rams, but 
with the Rams' loss and the fact that they did that, do you kind of foreshadow that as more likely to trade for Kareem Hunt, or does that not change your opinion at all? I, th I personally think it's more about the Browns tonight. I think that if the Browns lose, they are basically OUT of the, div the division. I, I think it's going to be too far gone. If they win, I think they're not just wanting to get rid of Kareem Hunt for anything. But if they lose tonight's game, they're probably thinking Kareem Hunt doesn't help us do anything of relevance this year now that we're out of it. Let's get a pick for him. He's not on, you know, under contract for next year. So that that's what I'm watching for. You guys ever refresh your scores and hope they change oh, yeah. before? Oh, oh yes. yes. Yeah. I remember losing to stupid uh, Jester Papa Josh by 0 0.2 points earlier this year. I checked that score all the time for any kind of update. You're still you going lost, back? You lost, still to, going uh, back. <laughs> you lost to stupid Jester Papa Josh? Yes, I did by 0 0.2 points. That was today's News and Notes brought to you by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Let's get into the studs. <laughs> This week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. Where are you at now, Jay? I'm at a 33. You're at a it's, 33? It, All right, it's escalating, we're... but I'm feeling good. I got a fan on my legs, and I'm not wearing pants. So this is really helpful. That is not a joke. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. And from what we understand, Hagrid did wear pants. Sometimes. Okay. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. I've read the book, so I'm kind <laughs> right, of an expert. Yeah, you are an expert. <laughs> All right, quarterback studs, Tua. 29 for 36, the highest rated passer in football, 382 and three. Looked great, and it, you can look great now, when you've got Jalen Waddle and Tyreek Hill. Yeah, does the passer rating take into account, like, if this wasn't Tyreek Hill that he had thrown the ball up to, that the, the receiver is not coming down with that pass? Well, I mean, look, I'm going to give Tua 100% credit. Wow. 100%. I, I'm, I'm not, this is not to dog on him, but there were. Tom, he, Tom Brady he, has Chris Godwin and Mike Evans. But I'm saying Tua played a, a a very good game overall, but there was at least two deep passes that were just drastically underthrown, and it was the it was Tyreek Hill's speed being able to stop and come back to the ball and then just his overall skill. But that's why you do it. You I know, know, I, he, I know, you know is, that he will save your bacon. But it's is like it factored the into the passer rating? That's all I was asking. No, no, the passer rating does not factor in like, oh, was how good the wide receiver is. Right. Uh, it's certainly helpful, but for fantasy purposes, this is why you can continue to trust Tua. He's got Jalen Waddle, he's got Tyreek Hill, and he is a, a good enough quarterback to just get it done with those guys every single week. So, uh, Andy, I know you've been talking about you, you grabbed Tua for this week's matchup on Justin Herbert's bye, and now going forward, you have a legitimate, a real question of like, do you just keep rolling with Tua, especially while Mike Williams is out for the next month? I, I think you play think, the matchup there. I was, yeah, I think I'm going to play the matchups. And, and the truth is, is Tua's got two weeks now that are better than anything Herbert's put up this year. And uh, they play Chicago next week. So uh, something to look at. Jalen Hurts, uh, another big first half. Dude, someone, touch. someone keep pace with the Eagles, please. Seriously, I kept I I literally pulled up the Eagles schedule, praying that they played like the Bills at some point this year, um, because nobody could keep up with them. So he has a monster first half and has a sprinkle in a little bit later, but he only had two rushing attempts, which is by far his lowest of the season, and it didn't matter because he didn't need to run. Bomb after bomb after bomb yeah. to AJ Bomb. <laughs> Uh, tried it out. Didn't like it. Thank you. Uh, and we'll talk about A.J. Brown here in a minute. Yeah. Uh, Justin Fields. Yeah, baby. Are they figuring this offense out in Chicago? I I think you have to say that they are because this is now, what, three or four weeks? His three-game pace on the ground is 1,303 rushing yards. They wow. are utilizing him properly. Yeah. So we got three weeks in a row. QB 13, 8, 5, and currently sitting Against at quarterback. Dallas. Five. Yeah. And it, the Chicago Bears were in this game. If you look at the final score of 49 to 29, like, wow, they got shellacked. I bet the Bears put up some garbage points. But deep into this game, the Bears were keeping pace until Dallas, the much better team, eventually pulled away. But this is this is very encouraging news for Justin Fields here, who, oh man, the run for Justin Fields, Miami, Detroit. 
Atlanta. And 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 what Andy Justin s- Fields, baby, let's go. What Andy said as far as are they figuring it yeah. out? That is true. You they look at how they new software. Yeah, they they look at how they started the season. You had 28 rushing yards, 20 rushing yards for Justin Fields. And then now, I mean, they are opening him up as a running back. They are utilizing his strengths. He hasn't been anywhere near that since that point. 47, 52, 47, 88, 82, 60. Yeah. He is, his baseline of rushing, now that they're utilizing him the right way, is outrageous. And so as a fantasy asset going forward, Justin Fields is more than a streamer. He's a top 12 quarterback right now. Yeah. He's real. This, I mean, this is great. It's it, yeah, you suck, Matt Nagy. Oh, it's official. Oh, he sucks. <laughs> oh gosh, I thought we had a trade, trade, trade news there. Uh, Dak Prescott, Kyler Murray, Kirk Cousins, Marcus Mariota, all showing up in our studs. The yeah. one I want to talk about is Dak, even though it sucks because I played against him and I I hated it. It was beautiful to see him back. To the throws looked good. He spread it around. Gallup was involved, and they're going into their bye, and so I. Because they're going in the bye and Dak showed me enough that he's back, I think if you're struggling at tight end, maybe kick the tires on Dalton Schultz. Because the only oh, worry I've sure. had for Schultz is his injury, but he's going into a bye week. So you might be able to get him and uh, the rest of the season if the Cowboys offense is clicking. I think that's, yeah, uh, I dig it. that's a good play for you. All right, quick break and back with the running backs. All right, let's talk about the oh, man. bountiful week for running backs, starting with Alvin Kamara. Super Camario, 18 for 62 and one rushing touchdown, but better than that. Nine for 96 and two touchdowns on 10 targets. Yeah. Through the air. Yeah. He went bananas, and his target share, his target share while – uh, Jarvis Landry and Michael Thomas have been out is just outrageous. He, we've been talking about this, that the touchdowns haven't come, but he's not finishing the year with no touchdowns. He's going to be great. Hopefully you were able to trade for him over the last couple of weeks. And they, they were just dominant. This was a, t- a game that just the game script, you didn't need to use the wideouts very often. They shut out the Raiders. Yeah, they were just, they were dominating on the defensive side. Derrick Henry, 32 for 219 and two, <laughs> ho-hum. That's actually lower than I would have. He uh, expected watching. The I told game. you he'd make it snow. If there ain't no snow on there the ground, was, he can make it snow. There was, for the record, there was snow in Vermont this week, so this is unsurprising. I believe <laughs> this is. He now uh, has tied the NFL record with six games of two hundred plus rushing yards. I want to say against one team. F- no, just in just, general, four oh. of them um, are against the, yes. the Texans, and I want to say it's like four in a row. Like I can't wait for the next text. Yeah, their last four games against Houston: two nineteen, two fifty, two twelve, and two eleven. Oh, when so there yes, is I to say snow that on the field, and he's matched up with the Houston Texans. That is, uh, <laughs> he did a super saiyan. That's a security threat for the, the entire country. <laughs> yes, he has nine touchdowns in those games. Uh, Tony Pollard, he <laughs> oh, only had man. fourteen carries, and it turned into <laughs> one thirty-one and three. I also played him, by the oh. way. I traded for him, and I played him, and he's supposed to auto win you the week. But, um, no, I played the next guy, Deonta Foreman, who also had three touchdowns. But the, the Tony Pollard people, the hive on Twitter right now, just losing their minds with the, see, I told you if you make Tony Pollard the starter, and I don't think our our argument against Tony Pollard has never been that you put him in a full-time role as, as the starting running back for the Dallas Cowboys, he's going to be dominant for fantasy purposes. It's just the team loves Zeke, and specifically – the man who writes the checks loves Ezekiel Elliott. Jerry Jones was asked after the game about, you know, Tony Pollard's performance and Jerry, you know, dapping him up at this, then says, yeah, but we go, we're going as Zeke goes. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, Jerry it, Jones already put in the kibosh. Two weeks from now, back at Green Bay, we know who the starter is. It's yeah. Ezekiel Elliott. It, 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 Tony Pollard, there's nothing he could do yes. to become the starter while Zeke is healthy unless – he kills Jerry Jones. That's, that's oh, maybe the only hello. thing he can do. This is spooky. Ooh. Uh, Jerry's pretty old. Yeah, he is. He old. might not have to do much. Oh, come on now. You know who did <laughs> uh, way much? Christian McCaffrey. Oh, baby. I feel like we skipped the Deontay Foreman crowd. Okay, go back to Deontay right. can Foreman. We, can we go back there yeah, for a sure. second? Because 
twenty six for one eighteen and three is worth worth a sentence or two about the future for Deonta Foreman. Deonta Foreman. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of Christian McCaffrey, who needs you, right? Uh, he's gone, and Deonta Foreman looks awesome. It's, he's far enough removed from the Achilles injury where people uh, can just ignore that, and all of a sudden he. Uh, I mean, he looks great. The the uh, the coaching staff was saying they that he reminded them of Derrick Henry, and you saw it. Um, this was one of my favorite players coming out of college. Deonta Foreman yep. was great. Um, his his weight adjusted speed score was outrageously high. I was all in on Foreman, and then the Achilles got him. But if he's back and he's in this role, and now I know Chuba was gone, right? He's got the yes. ankle injury. Chuba's going to come back, but after this performance. I don't know that you can uh, – Chuba will be involved. It will be a timeshare, well, but it was Chuba as the starter and Deonta Foreman as the backup. I think that flips. Deon, like Foreman was still coming out on third downs and things. He just this was, this was the perfect storm for Foreman to have the monster game. The Atlanta Falcons are just terrible on the defensive side of the ball. They allowed him to, to stay in the positive game script where they could keep running it over and over, and because the defense is bad, you get huge plays – so I'm not while while Foreman is still in play as like I need help at the running back position I'm putting him at the flex next week on the road against the Cincinnati Bengals I am not expecting 26 for 103 yeah but or do you know who close. they do you know who they play in two weeks yeah yeah yeah, yeah. they're back to playing the yeah, Falcons so, so maybe you don't <laughs> trade Deontay Foreman there was a but, stretch in this game where there was 10 consecutive scores yeah this game was wildly entertaining which was. As everyone predicted, <laughs> uh, that Ingram injury, a grade two MCL sprain, he'll be out okay. three to four weeks. So they'll make a move. Uh, we have McCaffrey, Jason. You can now talk <laughs> about the bat in the cycle. He uh, had a rushing touchdown, a receiving touchdown, and a passing touchdown. Has not been done since Ladanian Tomlinson in two thousand and five, almost twenty years, and and that was against. The Rams. Yeah, the Rams. The number one defense the against Rams. running backs. Oh, baby. Do, do, do either of you have that? that <laughs> do I have Christian McCaffrey? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I do. Okay, that's good. Yes, I do. Do you have the tweet on the pass, the 30-yard passing touchdown? Oh, uh, I, I can. Have I you, can, that's just so funny. Jimmy because, Garoppolo versus. Yes, Jimmy Garoppolo had. I, I You find the tweet for credit. But Jimmy Garoppolo had his first 30 air yard passing touchdown as a starting quarterback for the 49ers this is yeah it was from benjamin solak who said uh the jimmy garoppolo completed his first pass as a 49er of 30 plus air yards outside the numbers this was his 52nd game with the 49ers christian mccaffrey <laughs> completed his first pass as a 49er of 30 plus air yards outside the numbers it's his second game that pass that <laughs> mccaffrey threw was <laughs> awesome it was like he put so much air under the ball and laid it up perfect 30 yards down Dude, the field it was it was crazy christian mccaffrey is a is going to dominate with yeah. san francisco he is and he got the same utilization you're talking 80 plus percent of the the running back rush attempts 80 plus percent of the snaps he's he he fumbled once for sure the second one or one was called like an incomplete pass but it could have been a fumble but it doesn't matter doesn't matter if you're Christian McCaffrey. Just keep putting him out there. Travis Etienne looks great. 24 for 156 and one. Three targets. Not getting it done in the passing game, but he is dominating. Um, out of the backfield, looks like he's being shot out of a cannon on every play. Uh, you just keep giving him the football, and you get a big play eventually. He is um, he's lined up. I mean, he's got Las Vegas next week, then Kansas City before the bye. Etienne is arguably a top five-ish yeah, like top could, eight running back rest sure. of the season yeah he's right there his his utilization was exactly what you hoped after the trade they they did not bring in uh Jamichael Hasty to take you know over the the job that was left from James Robinson you're talking about again 86 percent of the running back rush attempts for ETN he is the bell cow here also I believe leading the league, leading the league in yards per carry and um the the story of Travis Etienne will 100% for his career come down to durability. Can he stay mm -hmm. healthy at that size? Lost a season to the list, Frank, injury already. Um, you know, when you get 88% of the running back carries, you have to be able to take a few licks. So we'll see. Dalvin Cook, 
Oof. Nice week, Jamal yep. Williams. DeAndre Swift. Poor man. Uh, it wasn't the storyline for DeAndre Swift you wanted. Five carries, six yards. But at least he got in the end zone if you yeah. threw him back into your lineup. And I was looking at a snap report. It, that Swift yes. played more snaps yes. than Jamal Williams. Yes. That, fell, that feels impossible if you watch this game. I mean, it just seemed like Swift was nowhere near as involved as Jamal Williams. And, and he really wasn't as involved. Ten carries for Jamal Williams, five for DeAndre Swift. But he did out snap him he was involved which honestly that kind of scares me a little bit more for the utilization like if he had only played 30 percent of the snaps and they're working him back from this ankle injury I would be more uh excited for future games of growth there but the fact that he was on the field you know he ran more routes but he just wasn't as involved as you want for a guy that you know in the beginning of the year this year in the beginning of the year last year it seemed like you had a superstar in injuries Made the team go, maybe we can't just keep giving the, the guy the ball as much as fantasy football players want. It was his first game off of this most recent injury. Uh, and even during the, the week, even though it was, well, DeAndre Swift is practicing in full. The message we were getting from from the coaching staff was, well, he's trending towards playing. So even though he was you know getting that practice, the, the team was still hesitant to even say that he was playing for sure. His role will go up, and it's Swift is... It is, he's the receptions guy, and you had the five targets, five for 27, and, and Detroit, as they showed in this game, they can get into huge shootouts, but no matter what, their offense will have to put up points because their defense is just bad. Green Bay, Chicago. Well, let me let me test next, you. I, I'm, I'm still, I, I still believe in uh, Swift would as you, like a top 15 guy. Would you trade DeAndre Swift for Jonathan Taylor based on what you said earlier? Oh, gosh. Oh, man. Yes. I'm answering for Mike. No, well, you, you've been the, the Jonathan Taylor guy the whole entire time, and it's it's not working out. It's yet. not working out. Stay the course. Um, I mean, what is what is Jonathan Taylor's? He's great, but what is his true ceiling with this offense with with Sam Ellinger as the quarterback? Well, I mean, we we got one game. I yeah, we and it, they they were on the precipice of a victory. They lost it. Right, but there um, are no receptions coming for Johnny Taylor, and that like that's the scariest part. Maybe they go back to the film and say, "Sam, you got to check this." Part down. of it was part of it. He missed some of the game. Sure, that could be an excuse if you want one. Another one is there was a couple design screens that got blown up. That would have been opportunities, but it is the that is the question mark, right? What is the ceiling? And there are questions with Swift too. Oh, absolutely. Injuries and Jamal Williams problems, where he gets you know opportunities. I don't know the answer. I'm just laying out both sides. Yeah, I think that's that's a tough choice. Uh, and because I have Swift, I I guess it's just he's on my team, and I'll probably keep him. The 21 routes run is very encouraging for that first game. Should, should you be actually answering the question with Ramondre Stevenson? <laughs> I mean, Ramondre Stevenson. Maybe. Ramondre Stevenson, you, I don't know if people understand. I've he's been a top 10 running back four of six weeks, and the two weeks he wasn't, he was 14 and 24. He's that involved right now opportunity wise uh, and and it really is the involvement that has started since week three since week three you cut off the first two weeks of the season which is a large sample now six games six of the eight what running back do you think he is so far on the season from week three through now the running back five overall in fantasy and today's or yesterday's game was the most important because two weeks ago, it was all him. Three weeks ago, it was really all him when, when Damian Harris went down to injury early. So you, you forgive those. Last week, it was like, okay, Damian Harris was the backup. You're just That's his first game back from injury. We have now a healthy Damian Harris who got 11 carries in this game. That is Damian. Damian Harris played Damian Harris's role. Right. Ramondre Stevenson played Ramondre Stevenson's role going forward. So I, I think you can bank on him. I don't believe that he is necessarily like, you know, he's been the running back five since week three. That sounds great. He had two games that was all entirely him. I don't think the ceiling is quite as high for Ramondre as that, but he is, you know, I think he's a top 15 running back rest of season, even with a healthy Damian Harris. Do you realize his reception pace That's in those six is. weeks is 82 receptions on the year? And What's, he's on pace for set 1,300 yards and 11 rushing touchdowns. And he's he's a good receiver. We talk about targets being an earned statistic. I believe Damian Harris ran more routes than Ramondre Stevenson this last game, which seems impossible when you look at the target numbers, but that's because 
One of them is a really good pass catching running back, and one of them isn't. Eight targets each of the last two weeks for Ramondre, and we need to remember players improve, right? They have the capacity to become better players, and Ramondre seems to have taken a step forward in that avenue this year. Looks like a great dynasty play with Damian Harris, a free agent. Mm -hmm. If you can pick him up in one of those leagues, sure. I mean, the price will be high, but it might be a worthy a worthy price the way yeah. they want to run this offense. Uh, also, update: I am at fifty percent. I am at fifty percent right now. The number is uh, climbing. Climbing. What's I've the had sweat a lot of, proportions? The like, sweat is, most, is okay. The fan okay. is doing its work on um, the, the under, whole undercarriage region, but the, the the it's really the hair that's getting in the mouth and the nose and just itching and. You don't want to do the whole day like this? Work, work in the studio. Oh yeah, no. This is actually I'm thinking about ju this just being my look <laughs> going forward because <laughs> yeah, I haven't had this much hair in a in a Hagrid while. Hagrid opted into that look. Yeah, well, he, he chose. Yeah, he's a he he's, wasn't wearing he's a half giant. It's kind of hard. Yeah, you know? yeah, he grows too quick. The hair couldn't shave. Uh, Aaron Jones is much better than that other guy. Uh, Twenty for one forty three. Aaron Jones also looks like he's shot out of a cannon every time he takes the handoff. Uh, 143 rushing yards, didn't get into the end zone, but uh, has Detroit coming up. Yeah, it's a, that was against Buffalo. You would assume that Detroit, and it's in Detroit, which is what you want. That's where their offense has been very, very good. Detroit on the road has been terrible. At home has been great. So Aaron Jones next week seems like a smash matchup. A.J. Brown, 11 targets, 6 for 156 and 3. Such a disappointing game. If you watch this, you're super disappointed. No, you weren't. What? No, oh, you were oh, not. Absolutely. No, you were not. What are you talking let, about? Let, let me a ask maniac. you this question. Let me ask you this question, you greedy Mike. Greedy maniac. Yes. Yeah. Let me ask you this question, Mike. Okay. When you have watched Dalvin Cook as a Dalvin Cook manager in the yeah. past, and he has an awesome game, he goes out, goes out there, gets three touchdowns, and two touchdowns were taken away from him in that game. How upset were you at those plays that like went to Big Irv? I remember. This it, happened. This uh, doesn't mean it was right. It was, no. This, this is a fair point. This is a fair point. <laughs> I'm telling you, A.J. Brown was unbelievable, unstoppable. He's so big out there. Obviously, six for 156 of three, you're thrilled. But if you watch the game, he had another play that was like the same pass play, just didn't come down with it. Could have been a long bomb touchdown. And then oh, he, when had, he got tripped. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. When he got tripped, it was like he was going to the house again. So Judge, uh, Judge Giamatti O'Brien, uh, look, how greedy is this man? Oh, he's so greedy. Oh, yeah. I'm, I play fantasy. You, you're you were right disappointed, greedy. was his quote, from a three-touchdown game. If you, you watched it. You just had the wealthiest man in existence call you greedy. Wow. Wow. That, how does that feel? Pretty good. <laughs> DeAndre Hopkins, 13 targets, 12 for 159 and 1. Unstoppable right now. Yep. His touchdown catch was redonk. Jalen Waddell, Tyreek Hill combined for 20 receptions. They combined for 25 targets. They combined for over 300 all-purpose yards. They are not def they're not guardable. I mean, that's that's the facts. I mean, I played Jalen Waddle in my DraftKings lineup. I'm not shamed this week. It was a delightful choice. Oh, man. Uh, Me neither. That's Hagrid this week. <laughs> the greedy guy is shamed. <laughs> that's, it's <laughs> funny. As we, were, as we were getting ready before the show, Mike points out, he's like, I feel like we're all getting like shamed by the wheel of shame right yeah. now. But uh, also put the Hagrid on the wheel, please. <laughs> <laughs> a little too much to get into. Yeah, that's like a half hour. Um, <laughs> but no, Waddle, Tyreek, they're great. They make t Tua viable every week. DJ Moore. 11 yep. targets, 6 for 152, and 1. He won and lost the game for the oh, Carolina he didn't Panthers. Lose the, the kicker lost the game. Uh, the kicker lost the game. Well, I mean, the kicker, the kicker lost the game because he missed the much longer kick, yes. He also missed a field goal to win the game that was exactly where the extra point is normally. I think, I think the, the question is, is what is the percentage chance they win the game if DJ Moore keeps his helmet on? That's fair, and I would put it at 90% because that's about what the extra point kicking is. DJ Moore, I think based on his uh, face on the bench, would say, I lost that game for us. I think he would say that because he felt it. Uh, he caught a he also hail mary the game for them. Yes, he, well, that's I don't blame him at all, at okay. all. Okay. I don't know that I would have done anything different just because you're in the moment. You're so excited. You catch the hail mary bomb touchdown to win the game. He rips his helmet off, which is a foul. That is that is illegal. Yep. He gets the penalty. They move the extra point back 15 yards. The extra point is missed. That would have been the game winner. They go to overtime. 
And uh, so he, he first ser- time in his career, top eight, two weeks in a row. Yeah, <laughs> of course. P.J. Walker. It's not I, I, P- Texas Ranger. <laughs> P.J. Walker, Texas Ranger, looked better than than Baker Mayfield. Just. In general, the the ball had more zip, and he's looking at DJ Moore. Well, he can get out of the pocket. I mean, he moves around, and then that means DJ Moore's open. Yeah, but there's also a good ball. That the hail mary pass at the end was a perfect pass. Yeah, and and perfect. The worst defense. I, I don't understand how they don't have someone at at the deepest point of the field. But DJ Moore very good. Um, with with no Robbie Anderson and no Christian McCaffrey, I think it just continues for DJ Moore. Well, the the, the crazy thing is, I think it's the quarterback. I really do. I mean, Baker, they said, was warming up during part of this game when P.J. Walker wasn't looking so good. I got scared for D.J. Moore. That's fair. Because it's like he's played a lot of his career with Robbie Anderson sitting on the sideline doing nothing, and I just – he's impressive. You know it's going to change, though. They're not going to just stick with P.J. Walker the rest of the year because they're going to lose games, and then Darnold will be healthy, and they'll switch to Darnold at some point. And maybe. maybe. Yeah, maybe. We'll see. I mean, the, and, and then at that point, you should be terrified. Yeah. For DJ Moore. Rondale Moore, 7 for 92 and a touchdown. Nice week for him. Diggs, always great. Cup, of course. Ayuk, third straight week of relevance. 6 for 81 and a touchdown. I mean, when Debo is not there, Brandon Ayuk is a really good play. Dollar Store, Deontay Johnson, Jacoby (laughs) Myers. Again, 12 targets. Wait, wait, wait. Dollar Store, Deontay Johnson. Deontay Johnson is Dollar Store, Jacoby Myers Well, now now. he is. But I'm I'm talking about what you said at the beginning of the year, which is you know, I'm talking about draft price, my brother. Yeah, no. Uh, you, paid, you paid a lot for Deontay Johnson. You, you found that you, Gucci bag and at you, the dollar store. Yeah, you wanted Jacoby Myers. That's what you, you would have preferred. His target market share was exactly back to where you wanted it to be with Mac Jones back in the lineup. He is reliable. He is great in PPR. And he's actually scoring some touchdowns. So Jacoby Myers is wheels up as a as a wide receiver three. Andy's he's cackling. He's got a lot of hair in my face. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we've got like I, I hit the microphone. <laughs> I, I mean, you got the fan on. Got, I don't have the fan. Oh, on. you don't have a. Well, that's because you have. I do the have the shortest, short shorts. tiny short shorts on. Yeah, which yeah. is unfortunate that you can't really tell. No, it's fortunate. Yeah. Mm, okay. Yeah, I think there'd be some private parts that aren't so private. Uh, Garrett Wilson, encouraging game for him. Yes. Six for one fifteen. If you look at the uh, snap breakdown, oh, oh brother, they have Elijah less. <laughs> They, what are they doing? That's double birds why, for Elijah yes. Moore. Why are they not trading him? They could get a haul for Elijah Moore. He played well enough and was a high draft capital pick. Someone would give up something valuable for him. If you're going to relegate him to 10 snaps on the field, good. I feel so Here, bad for here's him. Here's what see, I see. I'm going to give a little bit of the benefit of the doubt to Robert Sala and the team here because we don't see behind closed doors. Right. We don't know. Like if he's going to come out in public and say those things after a win, we don't know what happens in the locker room and how disruptive that is to the team. So so I, trade him. Yeah. Well, sure. I mean, that's an option, but you're not going to take nothing for Elijah Moore. That would be stupid. But oh, it, that would also be a really, really bad move. They are currently doing that, though. They're taking yeah. nothing for no, Elijah I, Moore. No, They're you, putting him on their bench and getting nothing from him. No, I don't agree with you guys. Okay. But he played 10 snaps. I, I understand. I'm saying that you're getting nothing from him, but you can't trade him for a ninth. You know, can't trade him for a. You cannot trade him for a ninth. Yeah, for a, for a seventh round pick. But I'm saying, like. I mean, what if that's week, the offer they have? Next week will be very telling because if he plays a small amount of snaps again, which we. He. There was video of him in the locker room and he's still not happy. Well, Shocker. they asked him what his. Um, <laughs> They asked him what his rapport his was. His chemistry was, with, yeah. His chemistry with Zach Wilson. He said, I don't know. I don't get the ball. Yeah. So. I'm just saying, if you're going to perpetually punish this player, then you're you're punishing your team by not trading him. Well, I mean, what about would you have said that about the 49ers and Brandon Ayuk last year? Who, you know, after they worked through it, he came back, and he's a super valuable piece of the offense. I mean, yeah, you have to work that's, through. That's what I'm saying. Like next And week, I think Robert Sale is a good coach. That's my whole point here is that right. we're not dealing with Matt Nagy where you have a little bit more of a track record of frustration in the team in the locker room. The Jets are winning ball games. Well, not, and you have not a, yesterday. Okay. <laughs> but they've been winning ball games. I just think that sometimes you can't just take the fantasy perspective on this. Uh, Romeo Dubs scored. Yeah, he So did. he was good. That was a if great he, catch. If he doesn't, if he doesn't score, he won't be good. Yeah. Tyler Conklin, 10 targets again. 
Conk, conk. Conk, One for each touchdown. <laughs> uh, Isaiah Likely on Thursday. We knew that was a big game. Nine targets, five for 80 for Kyle Pitts. Yeah, you could Because I this. put him on the bench. What? You could, you could do this any time, Atlanta. Oh, man. This is, uh, I've, put, I've benched him twice. He scored both weeks. You're welcome, everyone who played him. Arthur. You have played him every other week. Is that, that is right? correct. You have, that is miraculous. At my own demise. Yeah. I mean, I played him and left Taysom Hill on the bench one week. Yeah, it's, it's not great. It's the pits, they might say. Evan Ingram, four for 55 and a touchdown. Wait, what? George Kittle back into the end zone, three for 39. How do you feel about Kittle right now? I feel pretty great about Kittle. He's been very good the last three weeks. No uh, Debo, though, just three catches? I Certainly disappointed with three for 39, but, you know, if you get in the end zone, he's going to be a top tight end because that's how the tight ends work. And so, um, yeah, I, I, I'm fine with it based on the body of work of his career and the last month. Greg Dulcich, the last two weeks, has caught 10 of 14 targets for 138 yards, had 82% of the snaps. I was watching that game closely. He, I mean, I was in that game. Yes. I played in that game, and uh, it was really one drive in the whole game. He was basically shut out in the first half. The third uh, quarter drive, he, hit, he caught an 18-22 and 38-yard pass, got dragged down at the one, mm -hmm. but it's looking very good for Dulcich to be a rookie contributor to your fantasy team. Yeah, he... Yeah. he to me, he looks like a budding superstar. What would you, uh, I mean, early, a little early for tomorrow in the waiver show, but Greg D's going to come up. Is he a priority? Yes. It's tough because he's going into a bye week. But That's true. It, I mean, but teams are going to go after him to try and fix their tight end position. And like Mike Gesicki, who was on the rise, he, he came through three for 38 with a touchdown, but the snaps came back down. The targets came back down. Uh, so... We don't know if he can be relied on after that couple of weeks of ascension. And, I mean, it's like you're moving forward with, like, Evan Engram, which is fine, but I think the ceiling of, of Greg D is just, it's up there. Here's uh, a little PSA for the Foot Clan. Uh, Greg D's on a bye, so I will be playing Kyle Pitts next week. <laughs> so make, <laughs> bench him. make the proper adjustments that you know are going to take place. Pooped in his big boy pants. Well, we got the uh, we got the floor for Daniel Jones. It was a yeah, we did brutal week. I, Seattle's defense. I had been watching this team three straight weeks. They've been a different defense. These young players playing much better. But Daniel Jones, no touchdowns, twenty yards rushing. It was gross. Yeah, the twenty yards rushing is the truly disappointing part. Um, but it wasn't disappointing enough for me to get shamed this week. It was yeah. perfect. Derek Carr was – I mean, Derek Carr didn't look like he wanted to be at this game. He passed for 101 yards. What? Wow. And he took so many sacks that looked like a man resigning himself. So you don't know the health of Devontae Adams. He was obviously the, the, the biggest surprising awful player of the week, but he was dealing with injury. Was didn't well, practice, flu. Or, yes, uh, with illness is what I meant to say. Um, he had the flu, missed practice all week, and clearly was not himself. When you have uh, a not-yourself Devontae Adams, no Darren Waller, the the it wasn't good for Derek Carr and and he didn't finish the game. Uh, fourth quarter you saw what was Jarrett Stidham in there? I don't remember. Some who guy. cares? Back up. <laughs> Trevor Lawrence, uh, one thirty three. Dude, the what are the Jaguars doing? They are losing a lot of games. They two, two and six are blowing it. I mean, they they basically if you watch it. their games, they start the game very strong with scripted plays. Yeah. And they are the worst point differential in second and fourth quarters in football. They don't have an offense really that is consistent outside of uh, the scripted beginning of these games, and they just fall apart because Trevor Lawrence, I mean, he's making boneheaded plays every single week. They're in the red zone. He's pulling his Zach Wilson rush to the right and, and chuck it into the defender's arms. Zach Wilson sucks so much. <laughs> We're He's, talking about Trevor Lawrence. No, I know, but the name came up. And this is the duds <laughs> section of quarterbacks of which Zach Wilson this, belongs. It's sponsored by Zach Wilson. Yeah, well, he threw a couple <laughs> touchdowns to avoid this this segment. But, yes, he – please he, don't roll right, Zach Wilson. Nothing good happens to the right. Three interceptions, two of which were just so egregious. And um, who's the best second-year quarterback? Right now. So, you got, you got Trevor Lawrence – 
Zach Wilson, Fields? Justin Fields, Mac Jones, and uh, Trey Lance. R.I.P. Yeah. I uh, pass. Yeah, I mean, I mean it's uh, Fields right now. Yeah, like, that's as of crazy. right now. That's I mean that that thing that can change yeah. next week, but like Mac Jones has regressed a lot. Yeah, I from mean what I, we saw. I don't know. It I don't might know the be, answer. I don't. I'm not willing to give Justin Fields the answer to that question yeah. yet. It might be Trey Lance only because he's not <laughs> playing football. <laughs> Uh, Josh Jacobs, a down week for him because they couldn't get anything going. 10 for 43. He had been a top three running back three straight weeks. This was bad. Mm -hmm. Jonathan Taylor, he was actually 16 for 76, but he lost. Was he? Yeah, he lost a wow. fumble. Is that the right number? Yeah, that's what that's I'm what seeing. I, that's what I saw. He lost a fumble, um, and he missed a goal line opportunity. And he missed some time getting his ankle retaped. It was after a 25 yard run when, you know, it was kind of one of those runs that you thought maybe breakaway mm -hmm. speed might get him into the end zone. You had a, a, a huge shift happen in Washington. Yeah. Uh, part of this was being down the entire game, but Brian Robinson just eight carries, no targets. He had two last week. Antonio Gibson, seven for nine. I mean, he couldn't run the ball either. Yeah. But he had seven targets, seven for 58 and a touchdown, and was the best fantasy player but on the, the team. It wasn't just the game script, though, because Antonio Gibson returned the kick and then played the first two drives. I might have even been in the second quarter that Brian Robinson finally got on the field. So he, It's Brian, really difficult to know what to do here. Brian Robinson is maybe a guy you want to put on your bench until you see otherwise. I'm not dropping Brian Robinson, but... This is a situation that you need some more clarity before you could put him out or you're getting you know, this week what Brian Robinson scored two points. Yeah, it was just, it was a disaster. He does they, not it, catch passes. Yeah, I mean he had he had two last week, no targets this week, and if they're winning, they'll put him in there. But if they're losing, they have two pass catchers. Gibson yeah. and McKissick runs two minute drills. It is risky, like Mike well, said. The next two weeks, their opponents have a combined one loss. So Probably Bad, should, that's not great. Probably should bench him. Yeah. Um, uh, Al Borley. Yes, sir. The pickle man. Yes, sir. Uh, you're pointing out that uh, Zach Wilson in Dynasty got you a pretty nice fantasy week. So, yeah, he sucks, but I mean, he he performed for <laughs> fantasy this week. Twenty six point five points in our league. Yeah, yeah. Uh, other issues. The Harrises. Uh, I thought you say my hair. Yeah. My yeah, hair we got some right real now. hair the issues hair on this and the Harris's. Show. Now, Najee Harris is is Man. brutal. I mean, this is getting bad. It is eight for thirty two on the ground. It is getting bad. We are going into the bye week. Jalen Warren got some more opportunities in this game and looked infinitely better than. And I this breaking this breaking my heart because I am a Najee Harris truther. I, I I the dude is great. I thought he was an excellent prospect coming into the league. Had a great fantasy year as his rookie season. But this is truly troubling that you're going to be like Eli I will be keeping my eyes peeled and ears open for some news over the next couple of weeks that are they going to get Jalen Warren onto the field more? Like which Warren, they said they will. Warren even through the bye week, Warren to me is somebody that you might want to throw on the back of your bench. Damian Harris also, a bad week. Yeah. 11 for 37. The Ramondre show is delightful. Raheem Mostert? Uh, disappointing. Yeah, he's he, super he, disappointing for what he should have been, a smash play. He, he wasn't bad. Got 14 carries, which is a good number. Ran for four and a half a carry, which is a good number. But overall, he didn't catch any. Uh, he caught w one pass, one target. It, it was the Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle show. Missed so, some time, too. He would missed a couple drives with injury. Yeah, that that certainly uh, did not help his cause. But obviously, you know, he he was a massive bust this week based on the matchup and what you've seen from him the last few weeks. I'm still absolutely rolling with him forward. Chicago, Cleveland, the next two weeks. Um, yeah, it was a bummer. Yeah, it's just disappointment. Uh, the Rams can't run the football. None of their running backs can run it. Uh, so I want to ask you this. If they trade for Kareem Hunt, are we just going to assume that it's he, a it's gold mine. No, yeah, like they they've got a real problem as a team. Well, yeah. they'll throw him the ball. That'll be the thing that'll help. Yeah. Kareem Hunt will be throwing the football, but not a gold mine in terms of the team is going to be all of a sudden way better. But a gold mine in if they trade for him, 
You I think would, it's a silver mine. Yeah, yeah, that's, mm, that's okay. All right. all right, you know, but like th- there should be some good volume there. Maybe there's some copper in them hills. Man, <laughs> cop, dude, copper is very valuable. People, yeah. will, people will take your copper. Oh, yeah, people, people steal will, copper all the time. Steal your copper. So Stop maybe, stealing copper. Or seriously, that. it's a real copper jerk move. Yeah, leave, leave our copper to us. Yeah, I need I need it for whatever they do with copper. I don't yeah, know. They Usually, do, it's like is a it water pipes? pipe. Pipes and, uh, and and the carburetors, wires. Oh, wires. Yeah, I got. Why do, they, of- why do they steal carburetors? That's not copper related. No, that's uh, they just Papa w- Josh. You're the you're the audio. I think auto you're guy. thinking of like catalytic converter. Ch- oh, that is what I'm thinking of. Is that because of copper? What no. in the heck is that? People steal those out I'm, of cars. It's for the palladium in them. They're what is cat- that? Thank you very cal- much. Palladium converter. is from science. Why are fiction? we making up words right now? Yeah, the palladium is what uh, Wolverine's got in his his bones. Yes. It's claws are made out of it. What are That's we talking? adamantium. Come on, Andy. Yeah, but what is happening right now with these words that I I've told never you heard. they stole these catalytic converters. I mean, I said carburetor, but <laughs> yeah, my calculation's not correct. <laughs> um, do the same people that steal the copper steal the catalytic converters? Yeah, thieves. <laughs> they're the, the thieves are the ones that steal. Yeah, everything. they're the dirt bags that'll do thirty thousand dollars worth of damage, so they can collect three hundred dollars worth of scrap metal. Okay, all right. Well, you know a few of these guys there, pickle. No. Okay. Uh, David Montgomery, 15 for 53. Uh, Khalil Herbert was 16 for 99. Uh-oh. That's why he was a second-half sleeper. He had the touchdown. Uh-oh. What, what's funny is Khalil Herbert <laughs> didn't play that many snaps. It's just when he was on the field, he was getting the ball every single time. Um, it, but it's a timeshare, and we, we, we yeah. saw that last week. And um, you certainly can pick up Herbert cheaper than Montgomery oh, yeah. in leagues. You, Herbert's on some waiver wires still. Let's talk about more duds. The uh, the running backs in New York, Michael Carter, James Robinson, dud, dud. Eno Benjamin, Darrell Williams, dud, 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 dud. Devin Singletary was not a dud. Man. He was a medium, medium he, normal Singletary. He was okay. And the way that this game started for the Buffalo Bills last night against the Packers, it was here we go. A Devin Singletary game is about to happen. And then they, the second half, the Bills just forgot how to play offense for a little bit. That's the Devin Singletary story. Like when they write the book later on in life, it will be like he was there and then he wasn't there and then he, he was, was there. Great, and then, and then, he then was they there. forgot how to play. Also, James Cook looked awesome. He did. Uh, he, yeah. didn't, he didn't get much run, but uh, just when he touched the ball, he looked really explosive. I don't know if you were in the office at the time, Jason, but when I was deciding my second half sleepers, I was running Mr. James Cook by – the fantasy hitman mm. as a possibility because of like it. second half rookies, you know, he had a big catch. He's you never still, know. He's yeah, but he still needs to overtake Devin Singletary. Sure. Who is isn't usable himself, but it's more, you know, what if Singletary gets hurt? Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, what yeah, it for is. Sure. All right. We got to blitz these wide receiver duds because I don't want to think about them very long. Okay. Devonte Adams, one for three is throwing this, throw it, throw it throw away in the garbage. Uh, Cartland Sutton. <sighs> this is uh, do panic alarm. Well, um, there's good news here. He's on by. So the the I difficult mean, thing for Sutton is nothing. Well, yeah. Here's but laying it out. The last three weeks for fantasy purposes have been just atrocious. Wide receiver seventy, sixty nine, and sixty nine. But Ooh, not nice in there against the Jets, which that was the the Brett Ripon game, if I'm not mistaken, was still nine targets. The four targets this past week against Jacksonville, that's what is certainly troubling uh i'm not if i have Cortland sutton and you want to trade him away i don't I, think you can get jack's yeah I, squat for him i don't think that you're going to get a good return so my plan like i have Cortland sutton on a lot of teams i loved him coming into the season and it was it was very solid to start so i'm going to sit on him through the bye week well i'm not going to sit on him i'm going to just yeah, put him yeah. on my <laughs> that's a mean thing to do i'm going to put him on my bench hopefully over the bye week russ continues to get healthier and they go we got to get the ball to Cortland Sutton. I think your hope is that Jerry Judy gets traded because if he doesn't, with the emergence of Greg Dulcich, and Judy has been very involved. Sure. Um, and clearly more of a go-to player right now. I don't know if it's separation or what. I think you have to bench him. Yeah. Mr. Sutton. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ten- he gets Tennessee after the bye week. That can kind of be the uh, the canary in the coal mine test there because after that it's Las Vegas. Unfortunately, this is not the first time in Corlin Sutton's career that this has happened. That's true. He's the magician. He he just doesn't, (laughs) uh, for whatever reason, like he's always going to be a contested catch guy, but I don't know if it's a separation issue or what it is. Yep. 
Devontae Smith, 5 for 23. It was an A.J. Brown game. Yeah, A.J. Brown stole everything. This one was a bummer. Chris Olave, mm -hmm. 5 for 52. His worst game of the year, I believe. Thanks, and Alvin. <laughs> yeah. They didn't need Olave much. That game script, they just dominated the pants off the Raiders. I'm not worried about Olave at all. Uh, what was your uh, takeaway from the Michael Pittman experience? Oh, okay. So I'm a little. I mean, seven I, for fifty-three. I am, I'm happy because uh, I was super worried about Michael Pittman. I'm happy that he got nine targets. He's the clear number one in that offense, even with uh, you know Sam Ellinger um, <laughs> throwing him the ball. That being said, he was in for a touchdown. He wasn't, but they was called touchdown on the field, and then and almost a, scored. And then he was a little short. If he was seven for fifty-four and one. Man, I'd be trading. I'd be trading high. I will point Maybe. out a couple things on that offense. One, his yards per catch went down, not up, which was something that was hypothesized. Yep. The deep targets, they were all Alec Pierce, mm -hmm. and that's what he's going to keep doing. And Paris Campbell was still involved, so not a, um, not a ton though. Like Paris Campbell, let me look up the touches. I, mean, I know Pitt, he Mike, had the big play, but Paris Campbell had two targets. Michael Pittman has only had one game out of the last five weeks, six weeks, inside the top 36. Yeah, disappointing output. But for me, what I'm, my takeaway was the tendencies, at least in one game in that small sample, uh, Sam went to the uh, the outside wide receivers where Matt Ryan, you know, he was – Paris Campbell was feasting on those short area targets. That's not where the Ellen Gager wanted to throw the ball. He, he wanted to go to the outside receivers, so – he also the dropped. Targets. Remember the towards the end of that yes, game, he, he dropped like a thirty-five, yes, forty-yard right. pass. Hit him in the hands. Great pass. Yeah. If that, if he just holds that, and all of a sudden he's eight for ninety or what, however much that that play was worth. Pittman's a hold for me right yeah. now. Drake London, yeah. Michael Gallup, disappointing again. George Pickens was goosed. That was that was crazy. <laughs> They needed to throw the ball. He has been a the pretty much the number one target uh, for Pickett and full goose. And unfortunately, this is the Gabe Davis story. He is feast or famine. Mm -hmm. uh, he is not somebody that they need all the time. And he's the wide receiver, Devin Singletary. He I just if if he catches a long touchdown pass, you're happy. And he has not had a week without a touchdown that. You were happy. Trade for Gabe Davis. That's what I would do. Really? He, oh, absolutely. I want Why Gabe Davis that? on my because I want Gabe Davis on my team. I want a guy who can go out there and put up a monstrous performance. He's Mike Williams, except he's healthy. And so when you have a bad performance, two for thirty five, just absolute garbage on a feast or famine player, that's the only window. Like you trade for those guys on their down weeks. I would I agree. I would try to get Gabe Davis too. Christian Kirk, seven targets, three for forty. <laughs> Zay Jones, one for seven. Yeah. On the I ground, mean, it's all of Jacksonville, except for Evan Ingram. And then Wandale Robinson, that two for 15. That was super disappointing. Mm -hmm. All right, Mark Andrews, three for 33. Yeah, he was hurt. Out of the game. We talked yep. about Thursday. All right, Higby. It's been two catches for, what, two straight weeks? Yes, The but this uh, Tyler Higby is my tight end, so you know that my eyes are glued in on what is happening. Number one, he left the game early with an injury, which the way it looked like, Oh, okay. Well, Higby's out. He's not coming back. He did come back. He ended the game with six targets, and you had <laughs> Jason fixing his. What's going right, on here? You're up to the 70s, um, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, I'm in the 70s. So, so for for Tyler Higby, there were two more design screens that Matthew Stafford missed, and had he hit, there was especially one where he was leaking to the outside. He may have had a 50 yard touchdown. So um, this is a this is a hold with Tyler Higby, and especially with. Like if Cooper Cup misses time, Tyler Higby's going to see more targets. I think there's a pretty good chance Brandon Cooks ends up on that roster in a couple of days. We will find or out. I guess a day. Um, Robert Tunyon, not a good week. Pat Fryermuth, unfortunately, yeah. Yeah, it's fine. He was four fine. for fifty-seven. Yeah, is fine. fine. He had seven targets. He looked good during the game. He just didn't, you know, have the great. He didn't get a touchdown. So I believe we made it through. We did it, everybody. How's the pickle doing? How's doing Conan O'Brien? Doing great. That sign looks pretty good behind you. <laughs> Deucer's Alley officially in business. Thank you. Thank you for dressing up. Josh. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being I, here. I Thanks know. for showing up to work. I, I want to know, uh, Brooks, what is your percentage? Because you've been wearing a latex mask for an hour now. Yeah. I'm all right. Oh, wow. I'm all right right here. Okay. Yeah. Impressive. All right. Well, 
that'll do it. We're that done. Is, I think that just makes you a big baby. Well, I already knew that. <laughs> I, mean, yeah. like, I start I start most times at a 70. Enjoy the game tonight, Browns, Bengals. Join the foot.coms, our fantasy community, and we'll be back with waivers and streamers tomorrow. Happy Halloween, everybody. Ooh. Goodbye. Ooh. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.